today we are back out here at the Cimarron Valley Research Station and we are standing in the pecan orchard and some might say we're standing in a field of flowers but Becky I don't see any flowers can you help me out here <laughs> there's flowers everywhere if you take a look into these trees if we'll pull down this branch right here all these um, things that are hanging down uh -huh. these are called catkins they're the male flowers okay and then the female flowers are a little bit harder to see, but they're at the end of the current season's growth. That's the female flower or the pistillate flower. So that kind of bright limey green color. Yep. Is There's where... just little um, little stigmas that are exposed right there. And just recently, since um, probably Monday, these started to be visible where you can see them. Okay. So all the male pollen has to find its way onto that female pollen yep. in order to get our pecans each season, correct? Yes. And so we want to have our pollen source within about 150 yards of the tree that we're wanting to be pollinated. Okay. So if you're planting trees, you need to make sure that they're planted close enough unless you're around native trees where they might have a pollen source that might uh, come in. But still about 150 yards is ideal. Okay. Well, I know people that just maybe have one pecan tree in their mm -hmm. backyard and if it's got the male and the female, why does that not work? Why yeah. do we need something different? Pecans are kind of different. They are, they're a monoecious plant. So they have male and female flowers on the same tree. So monoecious means I think same house or, mm -hmm. or something like that. And so we have both the male and female flowers, but they are a little bit different than things like peach or apple where we have a complete flower. Right. These are separate flowers. And so, um, and the thing about pecans is that they have dichogamous flowering where the, the, uh, the male flowers and the female flowers, they are not sexually mature at the same time. Oh. So the female flowers may be receptive before the male flowers, which that would be a protogenous type of, of uh, flower. And so I always think of protogenous, it has gin in the middle. So Jenny, the female flowers are receptive first. And then if the male flowers are sending out pollen before the females are receptive, those are called protandrous. And so I think of Andy or Andrew in the middle. And so the male flowers are sending out pollen before the females are ready to be pollinated. Okay, so you want one of both if you, you've got yes. pecans so that they can make sure that you've got pollen when the females are ready yep. and vice versa. Yes, you wanna have an early pollen shed and a late pollen shed. Sometimes they're called type one and type two. Okay. Uh, sometimes protandrous and protogenous so it's kind of a mouthful there uh -huh. but uh, you need one of each okay. and to get a good fruit set so is this more important on cultivars because I know cultivars are you know genetically all the same right if you right. get one particular cultivar right. the next one over is ex exactly the same that's right so when we're when we're laying out an orchard mm -hmm. in a in a commercial setting we want to have about every fourth row as a, as a pollinator. Oh. And so we want to make sure that we're setting that up properly during the planting time. And then also think about way down the road when we're thinning the orchard, that we're not gonna be removing all the pollinators in year 20 or so. Okay. So you have to set it up properly. Yeah, because initially an orchard is over planted, right? right? But right. then as those trees grow, you have to go out and you thin out thin some them. of your trees. Right. In a native grove, each native tree is genetically different. So you're gonna have good pollination uh, with, with those trees. They're gonna be protanerous and protogenous out in that same area. All right, so that's one of the benefits of having right. a native tree over right. a cultivar. Sure. Okay, well, it's, it's, you've thrown a lot of fancy words at us <laughs> during this I know, segment. I know. But it is interesting to know, and of course the female flowers are out on the end, and so right. you can see we have these shucks here. So that's where we're going to find our pecans later in the season also. Right, and whenever we start um, getting, you know, pecans are one of the last thing to start budding out in the spring. Uh -huh. You can always tell a pecan orchard or you're driving down the road and you see a native grove because they're very late to start breaking bud. And, um, but whenever they start breaking or opening up those buds, the catkins will be uh, developing on that last year's wood. Okay. And so we'll have catkin development and the shoot development on last year's wood, which is right here. Uh -huh. And so you can see they're all coming directly off of that last year's growth. It's got kind of that grayer bark to mm -hmm. it, right? And that current season's growth is going to be um, it, it'll have primary buds. We can't see them right now, but when this gets to be mature, we'll be able to see primary buds. And then the female flowers, they are born on the current season's growth. 
So we'll have this new shoot development, and this is where the female flowers are developed. So the catkins are directly on last year's growth, and the female flowers are on this year's growth. So a little bit different, and these are usually not visible until early May, but you can pull your limbs down and see if there's a potential crop even early before they're pollinated. Now, even if you see flowers, that doesn't mean we may, we'll have pecans in the fall because a lot of things can happen between now and um, October or November when we're harvesting. But you can, you can also check when you're, uh, to see if your pollen source is active just by shaking some of these tassels uh -huh. and seeing some of that yellow pollen being released or looking at your flowers and they'll get kind of a sticky substance on there. Okay. And that's just signaling that they are ready to be pollinated. Okay, and they are wind pollinated? Is they that are wind pollinated, yes. Uh, insects are not involved in the, in the uh, pollination. And so if we, if we have um, a tree that doesn't have a pollen source, it's just out there by itself, it may have flowers, but it doesn't get pollinated or it may be self-pollinated. There are some that will actually pollinate themselves but they'll lose maybe three quarters of that crop and the quality is not as good. Okay. So uh, we would rather have cross pollination if possible. Some trees won't pollinate each other the, the same or themselves at uh -huh. all, but others may have a, a slight window where they can pollinate each other. Okay, so unless you have native, you definitely wanna get yeah. more than one yeah. um, different types. And if these don't pollinate properly, mm -hmm. we'll have a lot of pecans dropping on the ground in June. And so we watch for June drop, and that's usually there was some problem with our pollination at that time. Okay. So they didn't get fertilized, and they dropped to the ground. All right. Well, thanks for sharing this information sure. with us, Becky. And sure. definitely, we are in a field of flowers. Oh, definitely. And I know why my eyes are starting to water now. <laughs> Thank you, Becky. Sure. <laughs>We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.